Welcome back, everyone, to the State Farm Analyst Zone, where G2 Esports once again defeats an LCK team and once again makes it to the semifinal at the World Championship. And it was a 3-0 and zero sweep. And I think when we talked about this matchup leading up to it, uh, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be very hotly contested, best of five. It might go five games. The teams were going to be evenly matched. But it turned out to be very dominating from G2. How come? I think if you look, I think it all comes from the group stage, right? G2 looked kind of shaky in the group stage against Sunning, but Gen G dominated the group stage, came out of first seed. But I think G2 in a best of five is just a different beast. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, the man in the mid lane just uh, got so much more responsibility in the way they drafted. It was no longer Caps trying to, you know, check jungle camps and, you know, uh, trying to repair a horrible level one situation. Instead, he got to focus on himself. And that's the Caps we know and love. That is the Caps we know and love. Very back and forth game, especially this last one. And we finally started seeing some fight out of Gen G. We saw adaptations in the draft as well as in game, but it just didn't look to be enough. And Yamato, you said a big issue with what you had seen from Gen G was the playing around side lane specifically. There was a lot more going on in the mid lane here, and there was just fights back to back to back. I'm trying to see it with the cameras in the way. What's going on on the screen? Uh, they're fighting in the mid lane fighting right Fighting in now. the mid lane? Yeah. Oh yeah, this one. I, I remember this specific situation because it was right before the Infernal Dragon, and uh, from the get-go, like, I thought draft-wise, uh, G2 would struggle against the Kindred, but G2 just always find a way to piece it together, and they punished all the mistakes that Genji threw at them. Uh, Genji just didn't have the patience to, to pull it through, and whenever they overstepped, uh, G2 was there to snap at them like a, a snapping turtle. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, personally, I think in the first little five minutes, you saw Caps was down 20 CS, it was about 6 and 40, he dove top, he dove bot, so there was so much early game pressure, and I feel like the only way that Genji actually came back in this game was G2 getting cocky in the river. They were getting cocky on the overextending and they just they went too deep. Like even on the fight they lost at the red buff and lost Baron. They were basically in the, at their tier twos on the wrong side of the map and they got collapsed on. But I think G2 in general just they mechanically outplayed them. And I just think that's wow, it was just a great series meeting. And now uh, a question specifically pertaining to kind of the bottom lane and you know, we knew that ruler was going to be a threat supposedly in this best of five and questions around perks. Now I don't know it was if it was just a side effect from G2 being this far ahead, but for me, Perks played an immaculate Jin actually three games in a row, his positioning in team fights uh, as well as the important moments. So that caught me a bit off guard and that that wasn't really a trump card for Genji at all. Yeah, for sure. I think he showcased a lot of good patience, a lot of good draft from Mickey X, always being able to slot in the right support, whether it was the Pantheon or the Tom Kench in this one, Rakan as a counter into the, of course, Tom. I think this helps a lot to support Jin and what he wants to do. And Jin as a champion, even if you fall behind a couple of CS against the Kalista, you're always going to be able to support what the boys in the top side want to do uh, with some bullets from the background. And that eventually happened. We remember that bullet that had hit BDD right in the head. Uh, that was beautiful, and I think the Jin gameplay, you know, I know a lot of people are going to talk about it like, yeah, it's almost a mage. Perks, mage, yeah, yeah, nice. Oh, okay, I, I see what you did there. I also <laughs> think the drafts opened up the Jin so much, right? You had, like, so much AP on their side. You had, like, a Lilia, Silas, a TF. It also forces so much Mercury Treads. So these small things that make it so when you have a full crit Jin against, like, uh, teams with Mercury Treads and uh, magic resistant items, then he does so much damage in team fights. Yeah, before we get to the bracket, I'd love to crown the Oppo player of the series to so just wrap it up. I'm not sure if it's ready. Uh, I know we were going to put some highlight plays in there, but I think it's going to be a surprise to no one that the Oppo player of the series is going to Caps. Man, did he turn it on today. Well, I don't know, wow. he was just roaming so much. Yeah, he didn't stomp his lane. Yeah, he was giving up so many creeps, but he just got so many kills on the side lanes, whether it was Silas or TF. He took the TF all the way himself sometimes. And in team fights, he just, I mean, you saw the team fights, right? I did, yeah. <laughs> Never just dying, watching. just completely popping off, one shotting the back line. This one in particular, uh, I don't know, too much damage. Uh, Caps is a type, the type of player that really, you know, is memorable for, you know, all the opposition. Like, Caps is the type of player that you see in your nightmares. We almost lost him here in the water, yes. but, you know, of course, uh, G2 just needed to make sure that he, his ego doesn't go too far. He needs exactly. to stay humble. I'm so happy that a team used the, like, decorum, like, shades of Mad Lions. Also, um, when we get here early for rehearsal, we actually <laughs> saw some live feed from Shanghai, and one of our 
production people over there had gone a um what's it like called a, a diving a snorkel and was pretending to swim in it so we're having a bit of fun with it but i'm happy that caps <laughs> did not fall in we need him no, for uh no, for the semi-final so let's take a look at the bracket because now we have what was promised and what many fans wanted and you know where g2 was living rent free in dom one's head in every single interview in the last year <laughs> the rematch is set up Last year, 3 and 1 to G2. Now we're talking about a whole different ball game. Yeah, for sure. I'm just looking at, you know, the junglers. The, the whole story was the junglers of this tournament. And I'm looking at SOFM, Carsa, and Canyon. This is a completely different beast from what Yanko's got to face up against in this uh, Genji Best of Five. So Yanko's needs to continue to ramp up because Canyon has been absolutely on fire. And of course, Damwon and Genji might come from the same region, but it doesn't correlate at all. Damwon is a whole different beast. I have to agree. I mean, in this series alone, Yankos, around level 10 mark, he was always two to three levels up in the skill jungle matchups and the carry jungle matchups. So when you're against the Karsa and SOFM at Canyon, you're, you, he might struggle, but uh, and there's hope for him. There's good, good signs of hope in this series. I mean, he did look better than, than yeah. we kind of expected. I think that was also something we talked about. Uh, Yamato, can you just quickly wrap up kind of the Gen G story of their year, which... This is going to be, of course, a horrible exit in this fashion um, because I think many fans didn't expect it to go this fast in this best of five. I think the tricky thing for Genji always was they had this identity that everyone feared. And I think they were too stuck in the idea of playing what the meta wants them to play in the sense of, you know, Nidalee playing to topside. I don't want to take anything off of uh, Rasko because he had a fantastic volleyball game and you saw some progress in the topside play, but everyone knew Ruler would be the man to uh, cause some upset wins, uh, whether it was against the G2 or any other team. So I think Genji had some identity crisis and I don't think they showcased the most dangerous version of Genji. And I think with the coaching changes, that's something that is also difficult to deal with. I have a very, very high regard to someone like Coach Edgar because he's the one that brought two championship titles uh, to uh, Samsung in the past. And to make that shift in the middle of the season is something that is difficult to deal with. And I think uh, coming into this best of five, the story of their best of five just throughout the year left me with a lot of question marks and they uh, remain unanswered. Yeah, and I, I just think that they really struggled to play through Ruler. We said it before, he was their star player, he is their star player. And as much as he did do well in the fights and the team fights, and he was the last person alive most times, low deaths, he never really got the resources he needed to carry the games. All right, and that is the end of the, the line here for Gen G. Our four teams remaining top esports sooning Damwon and G2 at the end of the quarterfinals. That was all from us here in Berlin. We'll be right back with more content with Dash, Wadid, and friends for World's Cooldown.